Kiev in November. For now, the last stop on a long and dangerous journey for Syrian Yahya Salibi and his Ukrainian wife Maria. The couple met while living in China. The next step was meant to be Damascus. It was this idea to go back to Syria. It was already started even in 2010, 2011. Nobody thought also, same in Ukraine, Syria was a safe country. After conflict broke out in Syria, they moved to Maria's home city in eastern Ukraine, a place that Yahya had only ever seen on pictures. In September 2013 they were married, without a single member of the groom's family present. They had been scattered across the world. But things were slowly getting better. With help from Maria's parents, they opened a small hardware shop. But within months, the area became caught up in the conflict between Russian-backed separatists and the Ukrainian government. When they raised the Russian flag, I already understood that something big will happen. But they couldn't just leave. Maria was expecting her first child, a daughter that they would name Eva. We come to hospital and the hospital not just like it's the end of city and have fields. So like you are warning. And their shootings, explosion, like, so it's like you, you are stress in stress, like this. One time was happened that I go, I heard shooted. Wife called me, she said, come back home at once. I come back home and under buildings have dead body. And I cross his body and I go up to building. Just a month after their daughter's birth, they decided to leave everything behind and leave for Kiev. We already arrived to one. We have photo of this bridge. It's broken. We were uh, driving uh, in high speed, and we arrived to last moment when we saw it's broken. But their problems didn't end once they reached safety in Kiev. Yahya and his family had nowhere to go and no way of making a living. Complicated rules mean most employers are wary of hiring refugees. Yahya is a project manager and had no shortage of job offers from abroad. But his particular refugee status means he's not allowed to leave the country. So, starting a business was the only viable option. Equipped with a coffee machine and a handful of accessories provided by a UN grant, Yahya was able to open a small coffee shop with a fellow Syrian. It's hard, not enough. I need to move, do two, three jobs in day, then you can survive. I lost my country and my wife also, she is now here in Kiev, she feel herself as a foreigner. Whether or not that changes for these children now depends on their parents successfully navigating Ukraine's complicated bureaucracy on their way to a new life.